Welcome into another episode of Locked On Phillies, and in today's episode, we're talking about a nice win for the Phillies in their first game in Chicago and why Michael Mercado's performance was huge and Trey Turner's performance proved something that I said last week 100% correct. We'll get into that and a lot more on today's episode. You are Locked On Phillies. Your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is another episode of Locked On Phillies. I'm Connor Thomas, your host. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We come to you from the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Please make sure you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube, all that great stuff. I really appreciate you following my content, whether you found me from just the YouTube algorithm. Maybe you listen to me on 97.5 The Fanatic. Uh, follow my work as a three-year credentialed member of the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, just a lot of ways to find content on Locked On Phillies. And the best ways right here. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB. And you can use code all lowercase. Locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. So go ahead and check out our friends over at Prize Picks. I think I gave you a couple of good picks yesterday on them. And the Philadelphia Phillies had a big win to start off the series in Chicago against the Cubs. Now, when I say big win, I mean, it was a nice win. It wasn't as comfortable as it probably should have been. Jose Ruiz gave up a three-run home run in the bottom of the ninth inning, or it would have been a 6-1 to one victory. It ended up being a 6-4 to four victory, but there were a couple major bright spots in the game last night. I mean, we'll start with Michael Mercado, right? Because as much as Trey Turner's two-home run game was monstrous and probably more the reason you won, I'm going to give credit to the kid first and foremost, and for a good reason. So, the fifth starter position for the Philadelphia Phillies is kind of in turmoil right now. Spencer Turnbull is probably going to be out till the middle of August or sometime in August. Taiwan Walker is probably going to be out until late July. So you've got nearly a month of baseball to go without your fifth starter. The all-star break is in there, so it does break up the time a little bit. But you're going to need a couple more starts from Michael Mercado. And right now, that doesn't seem like too daunting of a task to uh, handle for the Philadelphia Phillies after what he did last night. He was pretty darn good. He had a little bit of trouble early on in the game, went ahead and gave up a home run in the third inning. But even the first inning, he looked a little bit like first and second inning. You know, didn't look too comfortable out there. You could tell there were some nerves, but he battled through them. I mean, he ended up, listen to this final stat line, five innings pitched, two hits, one run earned on that home run allowed, two walks, Okay, you'd like to see him cut down on that. But four strikeouts, 78 pitches, 51 of them strikes. I mean, if I told you that that stat line was, I, I don't know, Taiwan Walker. Let's say Taiwan Walker was healthy. You'd say, man, we'll absolutely take that. Kind of weird he only went five innings, but we'll take that. And part of the reason Mercado only went five innings and only threw 78 pitches was just you don't want to pressure lock. When you get a young player like that out there, he made a great start. He gave you five innings. He got his first career major league win. He put you in line to win the game comfortably because by the time he was out of the game, you were already up, uh, what, five? So fifth inning, you were up five, nothing. Yeah, or sorry, five, one, <laughs> my bad. And it, that just makes you want to say, am I going to put this kid back out there and potentially give him a run, ruin some confidence-inducing moments? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take him out of the game. That's what Rob Thompson did. That was a smart thing. But if you could script a perfect fifth starter, well, like a perfect fifth starter in a realistic world, not like, oh, he's throwing a complete game shutout every time. Yeah, of course, every guy would. Perfect fifth starter in this role is like five or six innings, one to three runs allowed, keep guys off the base pass as much as you can, give up like five or six hits. Maybe let's call it six or seven hits. That'd be totally fine. We would take that every single darn time. If Michael Mercado can just replicate what he did last night against the Cubs, the fifth starter spot is going to look way better for the Philadelphia Phillies. And that's way more important than all due respect to Trey Turner. Like that's more important in the long run than Trey Turner's two home run game because Trey Turner is not going to have to carry this offense much longer. Bryce Harper, Kyle Schwarber, J.T. Romito, they'll be back sometime in the next couple weeks. And this team will be nearly whole again. But 
I don't know how you get through this stretch without Michael Mercado being solid, serviceable. I'm not going to set the bar too high for the kid, but he looked really good last night. Good mixture of fastball cutter curveball. Uh, had the strikeout pitch working a little bit. He got some really interesting swing and misses on that curveball and sharp break on that. And he was spotting the fastball well. I, I just, I really liked the poise that I saw from the kid. And I know he was going through it nerves wise, making his first career MLB start. And frankly, like, come on. This also shows you, and we'll talk about this more in our final segment when we talk about game two of the series, why I said what I did about the Cubs offense and why this should continue. But Michael Mercado, man, congrats to the kid. Awesome work. Could not be happier. Could not have dreamed of a better performance for Michael Mercado in his first career MLB start. So kudos. Uh, kudos as well to Trey Turner, who had himself a absolute night. This was an unbelievable display of offensive performance by Trey Turner. We've seen this from so many guys on the Phillies this year, but Trey Turner, the latest to do it. He had three hits, two runs scored of his own, four total RBIs, a two-homer night in five at-bats. He's up to batting 338 on the year. Now, that number a little bit inflated because of the smaller sample size because he was out due to injury, but that's what we talked about. So when I said this is going to prove something I said right, Remember how when we talked about how does the Phillies offense make up for Kyle Schwarber and Bryce Harper and JT Romuto all being out? It's not stringing together better at bats in a row. It's your top guys producing in run scoring opportunities because you know you don't get many of them. And when Trey Turner walked to the plate last night, every at bat was a run scoring opportunity, whether there were people on base or not. His first home run was a good swing. Good ball. Got a good amount of it. Like, okay, wow, he crushed that one. That's awesome to see. You needed that. The home run by Trey Turner really got the Phillies offense jump started. But the second one, he hit it out of the darn stadium. Like the ball left Wrigley, and it was kind of funny. They mentioned it on the TV broadcast. A guy out on the street apparently got it and threw it back into the stadium. And then they threw it back on the field. Uh, that's, I mean, they've got good fans up there in Chicago. That's a funny little moment there. But to hit the ball out of the stadium, it was the second longest, I believe, home run of Trey Turner's major league career. It was the longest he's hit this year. An absolute nuke. It was like nearly 440 feet. That's impressive to see for Trey Turner, a guy who hasn't really shown off the power yet this year. And I know he's been hurt for a little bit and didn't have much time to heat up before that. Oh, he's definitely heating up. He was big on his birthday in the final game of the series against the Miami Marlins, and he was big in game one against the Chicago Cubs. Uh, if he gets on a heater, you can absolutely withstand this time without Harp, Schwab, and Real Muto. So I feel great about what you saw from Trey Turner last night. Is he going to be an all-star? Here's what I'll say. I don't know that he deserves it simply because of the time he missed due to injury. I'm going to be realistic here. Would I love to see it? Am I going to complain if like Trey Turner's in the all-star game? No, I'm not. But other fans may, and they may have a point. I don't know that he, like he is an all-star caliber player, but that whole, like, how do you value missed time as opposed to performance and like comparing those two, it's a tough thing. So if he doesn't make it, I don't think it's going to be like, ah, he was hugely snubbed. I think the argument would be missed time. But if he does make it, he's definitely been one of the better shortstops in baseball this year. And that's a pretty darn good development based on last season where he looked like he couldn't hit the broadside of a barn at this point in the year. So I love what I saw from Trey Turner last night. Just a quick thing. This has been something that I've been kind of mulling around in my mind. Just one of these dumb baseball thoughts. But seeing Trey Turner hit that ball out of the stadium at Wrigley, like clear out of the park, Every baseball stadium, in my opinion, if I was made commissioner of baseball, every stadium should have a portion of the stadium where you can hit the ball out of it. Like, how fun is it to watch the ball clear right field out in Pittsburgh and go into the Allegheny? Clear right field in San Francisco, go to the McCovey Cove. Like, you should be able to hit the ball out of every ballpark. There should be a way to do that. It just makes it so much more fun. That's the number one way to, like, determine, oh, did he mash that? Could you imagine if you could hit the ball out of Yankee Stadium if it just stopped at, like, the top of the bleachers? Probably wouldn't be great for revenue, but screw it. I'm the commissioner. So I say allow us to hit balls out of every stadium. Uh, the other guys who had solid nights, Bryson Stott, two for five from the leadoff spot, two runs scored. That's encouraging. He has struggled at points this year. Maybe being in the leadoff spot will jumpstart him. The confidence that shows. 
He also got one for three performance from Nick Castellanos with a run scored, a great play in right field up against the wall. Johan Rojas played solid center field. He was one for four. Garrett Stubbs, one for four with two big RBIs early on in the game. I said Trey Turner kind of jump-started the scoring. It was actually really Garrett Stubbs that got it going early for the Philadelphia Phillies. And then you also saw Cody Clemens go one for four with a run scored. It was a relatively balanced approach for the Phillies as far as contributors, but the big gun for the Phils last night was clearly Trey Turner, and that's a great sign for a guy that is definitely, I was going to say probably, definitely the best hitter in this lineup right now with Harper and Schwarber and Romuto out, the big three. I'm just going to start calling them the big three so I don't have to go through all those names. With the big three out, Trey Turner was the best hitter, and he played like the best hitter last night. But speaking of best, we've got just, I can't believe, the amount of accolades the Philadelphia Phillies are racking up team-wise and individually this year. We've got some more to share with you as the monthly honors for June came out. One, probably not so surprising, one very surprising award to talk about when we talk about the monthly awards from Major League Baseball in June. We'll discuss that coming up as we continue today's episode of Locked on Phillies. I also want to tell you about booking Dot com With summer travel heating up, especially travel for baseball games, it's time to explore those U.S. cities you always secretly wanted to learn more about. Yeah, we're talking about your rival cities. Maybe you want to go to New York, Miami, Atlanta, Washington, D.C. Well, with hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on Booking.com, you might just find your perfect stay, even in your baseball rival's city. So let's think about it. You want a summer vacation? Miami's nice this time of year. Miami's nice every time of year. And the Marlins, well, they don't sell out that ballpark, so you'll be able to get tickets down there, no problem. Next time the Phils go down there and play the Marlins, use Booking.com to find your stay. From hotels that look over stadiums, like you can get in Washington, to family-friendly resorts, Booking.com has so many choices across the U.S. for your summer travels this MLB season. The right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your rival. So book today on Booking.com on the site or in the Booking.com app. Go ahead and check them out for your next vacation. Let's also talk about our friends over at Game Time because, well, if you're going to book a vacation and you're going to have your room squared away, you're going to want to have tickets to the game. And there's no better way to do that than through Game Time. This is the perfect one two of advertisers. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster, easier, and simpler. Like prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last minute deals, they've also got all in prices. Views from your seat before you buy. They have their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. There's so many ways that you can save money and make your life easier with game time. The flash deals that they have. Well, you can save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. Zone deals. You can save even more when you choose a section and let game time choose the seats. There's so many ways to do it. Plus, you're never going to be confused with what you're getting. The price, the view, all of it is shown to you up front. The Game Time Guarantee says they'll give you 110% of the difference if you find a seat in your same row and section for less. What else are you waiting for? Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. You download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked on MLB. You'll even get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked on MLB for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Man, what a month it was in June for the Philadelphia Phillies, as it seems like it always is. Kind of wild because as well as the Phillies played to start the year, it made June feel pedestrian. This wasn't, oh, this team has stunk until this point, and then they play 700 ball in June, and it's like, my goodness, this team can make the playoffs again. No, that's not really who this team is. This team is just a flat-out juggernaut that takes care of business day in and day out, night in and night out, and they did so once again in June. So it wasn't so much the June Phillies that we remember from the past couple of years, but if you think they didn't have a great month, my friends, you are sadly mistaken, or maybe happily mistaken if you're rooting for the Philadelphia Phillies to have a great month. We got the awards monthly for the month of June. And as you'll remember, Ranger Suarez already has a Pitcher of the Month award to his name. Bryce Harper already has a Player of the Month award to his name. So the Phillies are not new to monthly awards. But we found out today, just 
about 30 minutes before I jumped on here to record this podcast. Bryce Harper wins National League Player of the Month over Shohei Otani, who hit like, I think, 12 bombs in the month of June, maybe more. Like, that. There was stiff competition. It's not like everyone else stunk and Bryce Harper was okay. Bryce Harper was unbelievable in the month of June. The power was great. The average was great. The defense was great. The base running was great. Everything was great by Bryce Harper, and that's why he won National League Player of the Month honors for June. Wait, June? I thought he won it for May. Oh, no, Bryce Harper won it for both. He is back-to-back -back National League Player of the Month. For the last 60 days, Bryce Harper has been the best player in his league. Who else can say that? Nobody. That's an unbelievable accomplishment, and it puts you very firmly in the conversation for MVP when everything is all said and done. Now, him missing time due to this injury doesn't help his case. He's not going to win it a third time because he's just probably not going to play enough games in July. He probably won't play again until... I don't know, like the 19th is when they come back from the All-Star break, I believe. So you're looking at a situation where you'd have to have a heck of like a 12 days for him to win an award again for this month. But to win it back to back is just it's such a rarity. He's on such a hot stretch. And we hope that that continues when he comes back and gets healthy. But he's been a godsend for the Phillies this year. We knew that he was going to probably have a better year than last year when he was coming off the Tommy John surgery and learning a new position. The year before, he was in and out of the lineup because of that issue and because of the thumb injury that he took when Blake Snell hit him with a pitch out in San Diego in 2022. This year, well, he hasn't been healthy recently, but starting the year, he was healthy coming in. He came out on a tear. He continued on that, and all the credit in the world to Bryce Harper. That was the non-surprising one. We've been having conversations about him being the player of the month for June for about the last week and a half. What I did not see coming at all was who won National League Pitcher of the Month. Christopher Sanchez gets those honors. This dude is having himself a heck of a 30 days. He gets a contract extension. He gets player, I'm sorry, pitcher of the month honors. He is the fourth starter in this rotation right now. He came into the season scheduled to be the fifth starter in this rotation. It was supposed to be, if everyone was healthy, Wheeler, Nola, Suarez, Walker, Sanchez. In that order, we had a discussion in the offseason. Do you need to upgrade against or above Christopher Sanchez? Is he going to even be on this team if they don't believe their pitching is good enough? Well, guess what? Their pitching is good enough. And Christopher Sanchez is a huge reason for that. He's been an absolute monster. His numbers so far this year are insane for the Philadelphia Phillies. And he's been great in June. His last start out was a complete game shutout against the Miami Marlins, you really needed that. It was awesome to see in a spot where they needed it, and it was his first start since receiving that extension because that was a random like Saturday morning news dump, and next thing you know, oh, wow, you bought out his arbitration years. Very smart job by the Phillies is being immediately paid off. The fact that they have that guy locked down for a minimal amount of money over the next four years is awesome to see. He's thrown 93 and a third innings this year, and he's got a 2-4-1 ERA. It's the second lowest mark on the ball club. It's one of the lowest marks in the National League. He's been flat out outstanding. On top of that, a 1-1-9 whip. And he's got 79 strikeouts, which is maybe the most impressive part. 79 strikeouts and 93 and a third innings pitched means he's pitching to weak, weak contact. That's not the way you see guys get batters out in the modern game. The modern game, the strikeout is king, as is the home run. It's power on one side and power on the other. And the Phillies have two guys that work outside the realm of that way of thinking. Nola's a strikeout guy. Wheeler's a strikeout guy. So you can do that with this rotation. But Sanchez and Suarez, the two lefties up at the top there, they both work with soft contact. And they can strike out guys when they need to, but they trust their defense and they just induce weak ground balls day in and day out. I could not be happier for Christopher Sanchez. Now, I wonder, do we look at him as a newer version of Ranger Suarez? Remember when Ranger Suarez had that year where he threw 100 innings and he had a sub-2 ERA, and everyone was like, this guy's the next big thing, and they dropped off a couple years, but we always believed that was the proof why he could have a season like he's having right now. Is this that season for Christopher Sanchez where he says, yo, I'm that dude. 
I can go out there and shut down any team at any time. It kind of feels like it. I hope there's not two down years in between this year and when he does it again, but there's also a long way to go. It's only a monthly award. I mean, it hasn't won like Cy Young or anything, but for him to lock down pitcher of the month for the National League as the fourth starter in this rotation and having started the season as the fifth starter, how do you beat this team? Like, Tell me right now, when this Phillies team is healthy, how do you beat them in a series? I don't know how you match up pitching-wise, offensively, bullpen-wise, any of this stuff. They're so good top to bottom, and the monthly awards show it. So that's, I believe, four monthly awards. Maybe Alec Bohm won one back there, too. At least four monthly awards so far this season for the Philadelphia Phillies. That's majorly impressive, considering how difficult it is to lock one of those down. So great news from Major League Baseball's press release today about those awards. And also great news, the Phillies have a darn good pitcher going tonight. No, it's not Christopher Sanchez. Zach Wheeler will take them out. And it'll be a pretty nice pitching matchup because Shota Imanaga is on the mound for the Chicago Cubs. So coming up next, we're going to talk about another absolute banger of a pitching matchup. Like, it feels like the Phillies have had some really good pitching matchups with their opponents lately, and this is the latest one. So, well, how do the Phillies get to Imanaga? And how does Wheeler shut down a Cubs offense that doesn't look too potent right now? We're going to get into that and discuss the way you get there coming up next as we continue today's episode of Locked on Phillies. First, though, I want to tell you about our next advertiser. It's our title sponsor, our friends over at Prize Picks. And I think I nailed it last night when I gave you guys some picks. Let's look at tonight's options. Zach Wheeler, more than his strikeout number, is the way to play it. Uh, Shota Imanaga, probably, mm, I don't know. Maybe less on his strikeout numbers. I feel like the Phillies are going to go ahead and see him well. well. Let me tell you about what Prize Picks is first before I get into all of this. I almost forgot to let you know that they're America's number one daily fantasy sports app. They've got over 5 million active members. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. All you got to do, right? It's super easy. You just play the numbers. You're not playing any other players. And you just need to pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. I mean, basketball's done, hockey's done. There's not really too much else going on in the world besides baseball. So why don't you make some money on the Phillies? You can turn $10 into $1,000. You can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. So all you got to do is take my NOLA more than strikeouts, show to Imanaga less than strikeouts, add a couple guys to get some hits in there, take their over, maybe look at Trey Turner, who's been red hot lately, and you can win. It's super easy to do. Plus, they're going to cut you a deal. Download the Prize Picks app today. You use code Locked on MLB. You'll get a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That's code Locked on MLB on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Prize Picks. Pick more, pick less. <laughs> it's that easy. Let's talk now about Game Two. Normally, I would preview this in the second segment, but we had some awards and honors to give out, and I'm not talking about those uh, first half awards. You can go ahead and listen to that. In one of our earlier episodes this week, I handed out awards for the first half of the season for the Philadelphia Phillies, but no. We went through the actual awards. We reviewed last night's game. Let's preview tonight's game, and we've got to start with that pitching matchup. So now, if you're not familiar with Shota Imanaga, he's been so good for the Cubs this year, a tough lefty, Wears a great number, number 18. That was my old number. And he's 7-2 and two on the season with a 3.07 ERA. He's better than that ERA suggests. He's kind of struggled a little bit lately, but when he's on, he's on. He was near the top of the ERA leaderboard in the National League. He would still be relatively high up there if he qualified as far as innings. Unfortunately, he's only thrown 85 innings, so he hasn't gotten high enough to qualify for that. He's allowed 80 hits in those 85 innings, so he does have a 1.11 whip. That's not as good as Zach Wheeler's .98, which is just patently ridiculous. But the 84 strikeouts and 85 innings pitched, the 14 walks allowed, he just knows how to spot the baseball. You can get him with a long ball. He's given up 10 bombs so far this year. So if you're going to beat him, and I said this is how the Phillies are going to have to beat teams when they can't string together consistent at-bats because the lineup isn't as strong as it should be, you might have to leave the yard a couple times. The good news is, as a lefty, normally lefties are tougher for the Philadelphia Phillies to uh, face off against because of Harper and Schwarber. But 
because they're currently out. Those guys are now replaced with right-handed bats in some cases, or your top hitters are righties. So Trey Turner, I can't imagine he doesn't stay hot. I'd also look at Nick Castellanos to have a day. Uh, Raphael Marchand, who's probably going to get the start for the Philadelphia Phillies because you've got a tough lefty on the mound there and don't want to put stubs against him. Uh, it could be stubs with Wheeler throwing, but if it's Marchand, I think he might have himself a nice little day. And Alec Bohm has been kind of quiet-ish. You could certainly use him stepping up and being in a position where he helps the team win tonight's game. Those are the guys that you look at. I'm not looking at David Dahl or Johan Rojas or Christian Pache or Whit Merrifield or any of those guys. No, I'm going to be realistic about the players who need to carry this team right now. And it's the star players, and they're going to have to be big in this game. Uh, looking at what the Cubs bring to the table offensively, I just like, again, we'll run through it. We talked about it on yesterday's episode, but uh, Chris Morrell, Nico Horner, Cody Bellinger, Ian Happ, Dansby Swanson, like they don't really have – guys that are stepping up the way that the name recognition would tell you. Even the guys that were big last night for the Cubs in that game, the ones that produced the run scoring opportunities for Chicago. Uh, you had great at bats. If you're looking from the Chicago perspective against the bullpen and against Michael Mercado from Cody Bellinger, who had an RBI double in the third. And then say Suzuki who said goodbye to a baseball in the bottom of the ninth inning, little, three run shot to make it interesting but i don't know outside of those two guys and even those two guys have not been great like bellinger has been playing okay for the cubs this year not up to expectations but definitely better than some of his peers say suzuki has been okay he's batting 262 bellinger 270 so those are the guys leading that team you got a guy in Trey Turner who homered twice and is batting 338. There's no way this offense should be able to hang with Zach Wheeler. There is no way that the Cubs should be able to put up a significant amount of runs tonight unless something goes crazy wrong. That doesn't mean you're going to win the game because this is going to be, I'd imagine, a lower scoring game than six to four. I would be looking at a situation where maybe this is a, I don't know, four to one ball game tonight. And Zach Wheeler has to be really dominant, and the Phils have to scrape across a couple runs in order to win this contest. Now, the good news is they're playing to win the series tonight, so you've got a chance to take care of business before you have to worry about the final game. And then having a sweep potentially on the table, well, that really makes the next game against – or sorry, the next series against Atlanta – it matter less. I know the whole head-to-head -head matchup in division, you always want to play well in those. If you don't know, folks, the Philadelphia Phillies woke up this morning nine games up on the Atlanta Braves. They have better than an 81% chance to win the NL East. They are steadying their lead, even though they're not playing with their best lineup. And they're starting to play slightly better competition. I know the Cubs below 500, bottom of the NL Central. Like I said yesterday, they had the best record wins-wise of any team in last place in any division in baseball. So, yeah, they're last place, but the NL Central is kind of weird. They're not as bad of a team as their record suggests. If you take care of business against them, you sweep all these games, you build up a big enough lead against Atlanta that those games don't matter, even if you do lose two of three to the Atlanta Braves, you will take that every step of the way. Tough series like ones against Atlanta and the Dodgers – are not just dependent on those series themselves. You win enough games outside of those series, they feel a lot less daunting. You have a lot less pressure when you play them, and you can just go out there and just say, hey, okay, we're not pressing to try and win this game. We're not making this more than what it is, one of 162. We just swept the team, or we just won a series against a team in Chicago, whatever the case may be. We're comfortable with where we're at. That's why this matters, because mentality is huge for this team. I talked about the win over the Marlins on Sunday being maybe the win of the season for what it did for the mentality of the fan base and the team. A rough series. You couldn't afford to lose. They ended up splitting it. Well, now go out there and win another series. Take care of business. You won't have lost the series in, what, like five matchups? It's a pretty good place to be. It's not as good as their streak earlier on in the season, but, hey, never too late to build a better one. So hopefully the game goes the Phillies way again, another 8.05 PM first pitch an hour later or an hour and 20 minutes later, 25 minutes, I guess, because they're out there in Chicago on the central time zone. So stay up a little bit later than used to. Hopefully it results in a win. That's all for today's episode. And tomorrow's episode, we're going to be able to talk about all stars because tonight 
the all-star announcements come out for the starters at 7 p.m. We're going to react to that in tomorrow's episode as well as to tonight's game and hopefully another win for the Phillies. So, again, that's all for today's today's episode. I almost said tonight's episode. Today's episode. <laughs> Thank you again for checking us out. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Please make sure, once again, you're rating, reviewing, subscribing to the YouTube. Subscribing to the YouTube is the easiest thing you can do. It costs you no money. It gets you notifications when new episodes are posted. It helps me out significantly. So if you enjoy the content, I would love if you could do that. And uh, while you do that, I'm going to go ahead and get ready for the game tonight. So talk to you next time on our next episode of Locked on Phillies.